Hello. Hi. Shall we start? No. No, we shall begin. Shall we? Yes, yes we shall. Yes. As always, hey everybody, my name is Joshua and welcome back to The Virtual Chef. Today we're going to be making some stuffed bell peppers in our Instant Pot. If you have an Instant Pot, or even if you don't, it's basically an electric pressure cooker slash slow cooker. It's programmable, you've got settings for all kinds of stuff. Uh, but anyway, what's going into our peppers is going to be some ground beef. We're going to make a sauce out of some fresh tomatoes. Of course, here's our peppers here. We like to pick a good medium to large size bell pepper. Some Parmesan cheese, that's going to go on the inside. And also, for most of these, we're going to throw in some rice, which, to get things kicked off here, I'm going to put that into my Instant Pot. We're going to basically par-cook this so that it's cooked part the way through, and it's going to finish here in just a bit. So, open it up. I don't need the grate for this task. I'm just going to go ahead and dump in my rice. I have one cup of rice and one cup of water. Now, I'm just going to stir that rice up a little bit. The lid goes on right here. Gives you that nice tone to let you know it's working. Now, what I'm going to do is press the button that says manual on this model. Manual, set it to five minutes, and then walk away. It's going to build up pressure, cook it for five minutes, and give us a timer to let us know it's ready. So we've got some uh, oregano and some basil. We're going to throw into our sauce here. Um, you can use the dried stuff if you have to, but we really, really like to use fresh herbs. I'm going to use about three or four of these oregano leaves. There we go. I've got one really big basil leaf right here I'm going to take as well. And this is going to go into our tomato sauce. Give it a little bit of flavor. I'm going to show you how to peel a tomato. It's so simple. All you got to do is just start out with a pot of boiling water. Have your bowl full of ice water over here. And a nice good sharp paring knife. So the first step is to core it by just basically taking out the stem to go in at an angle and just basically work it around. Probably taking off a little bit too big of a, of a spot right there, but that's all right. We're gonna score it by just making a little X on the bottom. I'm only gonna keep it in there for about 10 to 15 seconds or so. It doesn't take very long. So I'm taking my spoon, dump that tomato straight into the ice bath. The idea here, providing this did like it's supposed to do, is now you can simply take the skin and just peel it right off. We're going to turn it on its side and cut along the equator of it if you want to get super technical. Straight down the middle. Now you can see all the seeds. You can just take your thumbs. I'm just going to do it one hand at a time. Get all the seeds and all the guts out. Alright, so into our food processor I've got the tomatoes we just peeled. I've got two to three, uh, actually I've got two large cloves of garlic. Depending on how big your head is, you can use a little bit more, a little bit less. I've got the uh, oregano and basil from earlier. That's just going to go right on in there. Put the lid on. Brace yourself for noise. I'm going to put it on medium speed for just a couple seconds to whiz that all together. check the consistency. Now we've got a nice tomato sauce right here, still slightly chunky, which I think would be really good in with the peppers. Okay, so after the five minutes of pressure cooking has elapsed, I let this naturally release the steam for about 15 minutes or so. Uh, that's basically letting it go by itself without pushing the release valve. Okay, so as you know, you can't have stuffed peppers without, well, peppers. So what we're doing here is we're taking the pepper, cutting the top off, gutting all the junk out of it, and also, when we cut the top, we're taking that top part, minus the stem, of course, and dicing that up. That's going to go back into the center. So what we want to do is take a nice sharp knife, about maybe a quarter of an inch or so from the top, cut straight down, all the way through the stem. Now you can see what we're left with is that seed pod. We've got the stem and everything on this. We'll get to that in a second. So to get this out, the easiest thing to do is basically just grab it, take it out. Oh, uh, aren't they cute? No. <laughs> no, they're little murder monsters. <laughs> we all know that. So now, let's get to work on the filling. 
Got a little bit of salt and pepper that's going to go into our ground beef and diced up peppers. Just going to do just enough to top it off. I don't want to go crazy on it because you can add more later. A little bit of black pepper. It looks like I'm putting a lot, but it's not coming out that fast. There we go. All right, so that's that. Into here goes one scrambled egg, blended egg, whatever you want to call it, beaten egg, if you want to get more technical. Our tomato sauce from earlier. This goes in. Now, take your hands, clean hands, I might add, and just start to mush all this together. We're going to kind of really, we're going to need and incorporate, get all this stuff blended together so it's a nice consistent filling. Turn it over a few times. Now this may look familiar, and that's because this is basically just like a meatloaf filling. Or it's just like a meatloaf, except minus the breadcrumbs. That's where the rice is going to come into play here in a moment, though. Still got some eggs that are separate, some sauce that's separate, so I'm going to keep on going until that's all blended together. And once this is mixed, I'm going to reserve some of it uh, that's going to go into a pepper with no rice. That's going to make that one low carb for one of our family members. Have you tried stabbing it more? I'm going to stab it more. What we're going to do here, take a toothpick, poke a nice hole into each one of these little pods of the pepper. This is going to allow for drainage when the meat starts to cook here in a little while. To stuff, it's about as easy as it sounds. Now, my, right now both of my hands are clean, but I'm going to keep my left hand out of the meat. Take my right hand and just fill it up. I'm going to fill it to where it's kind of heaping just a little bit over the top of the pepper. Just a little bit more filling the gap down here. All right, so now with our stuffed peppers, I put a little bit of some of uh, the sauce that was remaining after I did the initial stuffing on the top. And now I have some mozzarella cheese. Just got to press it onto the top there. All right, set it down and hope it doesn't topple over. <laughs> This is nice and hefty. This is pretty much a meal on its own right here. You've got your rice for the uh, starch. you got the meat, obviously, vegetables. I want to try to use all the cheese that I've got here. Alrighty. So now the peppers are stuffed. Next, they're going into the Instant Pot. I filled up water just about to the bottom of the grate that comes with it. And the peppers are going to just sit right on top of the grate. Luckily, you can see that there's a nice little bit of wiggle room between the grate and the wall of the Instant Pot. That gives us a little bit more space to fit these in there comfortably. There we go. And always make sure when you're pressure cooking that this little knob is set to sealing and not venting. What we're going to do now, find the button that says manual right here. Set it for 10 minutes. So I'm going to admit, I have this problem where I think that no matter how much stuff I put into a bowl, it's always going to fit into whatever I'm cooking. So because of that, we had a lot of excess filling. So throwing it into the Lodge cast iron loaf pan, and we're going to make a meatloaf. It's going to turn into some meatloaf sandwiches, meatloaf meatloaf or something for lunch tomorrow. Okay, well, we're going. All right, so the timer on the Instant Pot has run out, and now what we're going to do is wait for the pressure to release. And it's going to do this naturally over a period of 5 to 10 minutes, and the way that you'll know, I don't know if you can see this, you see that little bitty metal speck right there, not that speck, the little circle thing down there. When it's ready, that thing is going to fall down, and you'll hear some steam come out from this right here. When that happens, we'll be ready to open the lid and check on our peppers. It smells really good already. I'm going to release it. You can also manually release the pressure by turning it over to venting. Same process applies. You're ready to open the lid as soon as that right there drops. There it went. Yeah, you did it. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, just for safety purposes, I have a little nice little... Bleh, what were those words? I have a pot holder. Twist the lid. I like open it like this. Let out all that other steam. It's going that way. Pick it up. Set it out of the way somewhere. See what we're doing. 
Oh. Now you can witness me try my best not to drop this. For extra security, have a fart right onto the plate. There we go. What the drainage holes did for us here, you can see that some of that excess grease came out right here, but not to worry because our peppers are still really nice and juicy. That just got some of the excess to keep it because if we had not have done that, we'd have this pepper full of grease. So I've turned it on its side here so you can see that all the meat is cooked thoroughly. You can I put some more cheese on top because, well, more cheese. So I'm ready to try this and see how it came out. Oh man, that pepper's tender. It's going to get me a chunk of the pepper. Make sure I get some of the meat and the cheese there. Try my best not to burn myself. Oh man. That came out good. The pepper is soft and juicy. The inside is just like a meatloaf. The rice helps to soak up some of the, uh, the flavor from the meat. It makes the texture really nice and this is really good. If you have an instant pot, that's going to help you out a lot. You can also do it in, in a cast iron Dutch oven. You can do it in a casserole pan. You can do this in the oven if you don't have an instant pot. But I've only had this for a day, and I would probably recommend you buy it. I'm going to put a link to it uh, where you can get it on Amazon in the description if you want to check it out. But that's all for this week. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you make it, let me know in the comments. And I will see you next time. I can't